bienvenidos a la rueda de prensa virtual de Terminator Destino. Welcome everyone, we're here with two icons of our cinematic life, Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and of course, they're here with us to discuss the new no, film, the new sequel, that. which is 35 years nonetheless from the very first one. Uh, so let's, I'll start by breaking the ice and asking you guys, um, of course, Arnold, you've said uh, iconically many times that you'd be back and you kind of did along the years, but this one feels more of an accomplished return because you're together uh, 28 day, uh, years later than Judgment Day. Is it, does it feel like that? A more of an accomplished return in a way? Well, um... First of all, I think that you like to dramatize things. Uh, <laughs> it's not that dramatic. Uh, but, I mean, for me, it is always great that any time I work with Linda, and I think she was missing in the other Terminators, I had a great time working with her on Terminator 1 and then Terminator 2. So it was very clear when Jim Cameron told me that he has a great idea about a new story for a Terminator, and that he will create this story and have it written. And to bring Linda back, I was very excited. I thought it was really good, a new twist to the whole thing and the whole idea to make uh, Terminator, this one, Dark Fate, kind of like a sequel to the second one, I thought was also a brilliant idea. And uh, so, you know, I think it ended up really well after a lot of work and months and months and months of, of uh, work on the set and all this stuff. And uh, Tim Miller doing a great job as the director with the visual effects and all this. I thought that it, it came out really fantastic. Mm, yeah, it's very satisfying for fans and for new audiences as well. Uh, so let's open the floor uh, to the first question. Where was ready? ¿Qué tal Arnold? ¿Qué tal Linda desde España? ¿Me escucháis bien? We can hear you. Okay. Lo primero de todo, muchas gracias por atendernos y quería preguntaros en estos 28 años. Eh, Linda, tú tenías un papel eh, protagonista y también pionero de Mujer Fuerte. En estos 28 años ha cambiado mucho. Eh, esta película tiene un claro eh, protagonismo femenino. En estos años, eh, ¿creéis que ha cambiado mucho el papel de la mujer en la industria de Hollywood, en los papeles de Hollywood? Eh, eh, bueno, pues ¿creéis que ha cambiado mucho el papel de la mujer? Well, I think we are seeing... I do think we are seeing a lot more women taking on the roles of action hero. Um, there have always been strong women in film, but we are now seeing women that are armed and strong and fighting hand to hand. Um, and so that is definitely new. And I hope it's not just a trend. I hope that we get to continue kicking butt. Buenos días, Arnold. Buenos días, Linda. Gracias por recibirnos. Y bueno, la película también tiene un fuerte toque español y por eso quería preguntaros, eh, ¿qué ha aportado el rodaje en España y con actores españoles a un gran blockbuster como este? ¿Crees que se está perdiendo el miedo en Hollywood a producir contenido fuerte con este toque hispano donde hasta los protagonistas hablan en español? Gracias. Well, definitely, we are very proud to have Natalia Reyes in this outstanding role. Um, I, I'm happy that she really is the future of the franchise, and she's stunning as an actress and as a person, and um, just absolutely 100% capable of carrying on the torch. Uh, and I do hope it's the beginning of something new for the Latina actresses because there are so many good ones and um, she's living proof that she can handle it, totally handle it. Eh, buenos días, Arnold, eh, Lidia. Eh, esta película es secuela directa de, del segundo Terminator e ignora las tres entregas anteriores de la saga. Quería preguntarle a Arnold, el que fue parte en mayor o menor medida de esas eh, tres películas, ¿qué opina de esta decisión? Y a Lidia también quería que ella desde fuera, ya que se ha mantenido alejada todos estos años de la saga, pues nos diera también su opinión sobre estas tres películas anteriores. Muchas gracias. Well, uh, first of all, I, I would say that, as I said earlier, that I thought it was a great idea for Jim Cameron to create this story and to make this kind of a sequel uh, directly uh, to uh, Terminator 2. I think that Terminator 2 was obviously a very successful movie. It was the uh, most successful movie of that year internationally. 
and uh, it broke new grounds when it comes to visual effects and to action and all those kind of things. And I think that, uh, and it's something that you were talking about earlier, I think that Linda was not just another woman that was doing action. She just really raised the bar when it comes to action uh, amongst women. And so she was really became a great inspiration that other women then started emulating her and copying her. And I think there's just no one like her. And I think now having a, a, a senior come back now on a dark fate, uh, and again with the age of 60 plus, to go and kick some serious ass, it's just really unbelievable. The, the kind of shape that she got in, the kind of endurance she had, <clears throat> even though she complains about that it was hard for her to get up when she fell and all this stuff. But, you know, that's all... Uh, you know, nonsense, that's maybe the way she felt, but I did not see any of that. I saw a very, very fast woman, just like in the second Terminator, a powerful woman, a, a, I mean, ferocious with her speed and everything, with, with the fight scenes and so So I just think that this is a level that other women are trying to kind of live up to, uh, but it will be very hard to do. As to me, I can't really speak to the three intervening films um, after Terminator Judgment Day, but I think the element that was missing was just sort of stripping it back down to a story with a few characters that you can really care about. You can have all the special effects in the world, you can blow up a thousand buildings, but if you don't know who's inside the buildings, it hardly matters. So that's what we've tried to do, is just sort of bring it back to its stripped down form, a few characters that you can love and care about, and then we go from there. Yeah, I think the strength of this film is that it has uh, pretty much the, the elements that really are very entertaining. It is a great story, it has great emotions, which was, to me personally, the biggest mm -hmm. surprise, and it has fantastic action, and uh, the director, Tim Miller, is a genius with visual effects and with, uh, with, uh, with stunts and all this. I think he did really a fantastic job, and we can see, we can see this now with the test screenings. Hola, buenas, buenos días. Enhorabuena por la película. Creo que es una reactualización de la saga magnífica. Y yo quería preguntarles eh, el, el hecho de que la nueva salvadora del mundo sea una mujer y venga al otro lado de la frontera, eh, si es una declaración de intenciones a nivel político. Muchas gracias. Well, I'm not sure that that was something that we were aiming for, but it's a lovely bonus that, that's happening in this film only because it's in the hands of Natalia. Um, and Mackenzie, of course, is also equally wonderful. But the fact that Natalia is from Colombia and has, you know, just upped the level because of her incredible talent. And I think it's the talent that matters here. But um, yes, there, because we worked um, and created an immigrant, you know, ICE, a detention center. We were all very aware, and Tim particularly, about the sensitivity of that and the fact that this is a very current situation that needed to be addressed. And he, when we shot that, um, that's those scenes, Tim made a speech to say that he was so terribly sorry to have to represent the truth of, of immigration into America. And he cried because he just um, was aware of how real the situation was, even though we were duplicating it, that it was a very real situation. And, um, you know, whatever we can do to bring that into people's minds is a real bonus for the film. Hola, buenos días. Eh, mi pregunta es para Linda, que creo que es la persona que pasó más tiempo en Madrid el verano pasado durante el rodaje. Me gustaría saber cómo fue su experiencia en la ciudad, ya que estamos en Madrid. Y bueno, nos gustaría saber cómo lo pasó, si tiene algún buen recuerdo. El paso por Madrid. Um, very many fond memories. 
although I really feel like I need to come back when I'm not working so that I can see more of the city because they were early days on the film and I did spend a lot of time in my room sorting out the script and working on things and, um, you know, understood that I couldn't necessarily be the tourist that I wanted to be because there was so much work to get done and that's just number one priority for me. I thought it was and is a beautiful city just looking up at the tops of the buildings and seeing the, the amazing statuary. Um, I just was so impressed um, and kind of hungry to get out there and see it. So I'm going to have to come back. I go with you. All right, we're coming back. <laughs> Esta es la primera película con calificación R desde 2003. Y, uy, perdón. ¿Sigo? Vale. Es la primera calificada para mayores de 18 años aquí en España, calificación R. La pregunta sería si creéis que ese es el futuro de la franquicia y si habéis regresado para quedaros. Que queremos seguir veros pateando culos a los dos, da igual la edad que tengáis. I'm surprised to hear it's the first R. Mm, it's not. Yeah, I think uh, some of the other Terminator movies, definitely the Judgment the, the, Day. The, the first Terminator and the second Terminator uh, definitely were R-rated movies, yeah. Um, but that's just a function of what we had to achieve. You know, um, the PG rating will pull in more of an audience, but it wasn't necessarily the film that we wanted to make. Um, so we leave that to the other minds, the studio and the director. Um, but we wanted to make the movie that we wanted to make. So hopefully it'll work. But the bottom line is, I mean, it's not called Terminator the Babysitter. So, so let's just stay away from the PG-13 and all this other nonsense, uh, because it will be fake. And I think that was one of the reasons why in the United States the last movie didn't do that well. It did very well internationally, but in the United States it didn't do well because people were very upset, the fans were very upset that it was a PG-13 rating. And it is studio bullshit. You know, you have to understand the studios are great, they put up the money and they distribute the movies and they do a great job and all this stuff, but somewhere along the line people will also make mistakes. And the studios make mistakes all the time because they think, well, the Titanic made billions of dollars, and this movie made billions of dollars, and Avatar made billions of dollars, and they were PG-13 movies, so let's make Terminator also PG-13 movies. It's nonsense. Terminator is a brutal movie. It, it, but Terminator terminates things, he crushes things, he wipes things out, and, and that's just the way it is. And then, of course, over the years, Terminators uh, have added other kind of uh, characteristics, like human qualities or whatever else, but it's still, it's a killing machine, and that's what it does. And my character, Sarah Connor, is very upset. So there is some language, and I think that we might have cheated her if she couldn't be true to form and be her own ruined self to the greatest ex- Well, you say that around 20 times fucks. I mean, it's, I know. Uh, how many did you get away with that? <laughs> yeah, we were only allowed one F word in the movie if it was PG-13. <laughs> and we were like, where are we going to use that word? Um, and by day two, I had already said it 10 or 15 times. So there went that. And I think there was a second part to the question about your interest in potentially like coming back again, Asara. Well, we'll have to see how this one performs. And I mean, I'm quite happy to leave it alone <laughs> and to go back to my lovely life in New Orleans because they're hard films to shoot. Um, mostly, I would only really want to return if there was something new to say because that's just my, um, the actor in me that doesn't want to keep doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. So if there is something new to say, I'll be there. I mean, can I be journalist here for a second? Sure. Okay, thank you. So you mean that you're happy going back home to New Orleans? 
and not being with me on a movie set and having a great time. Is that what you're saying? You're coming to New Orleans. Yeah, He's coming to, come to New Orleans. Orleans. But still, we had a great time on the set. We had a great time. Working together, and you felt productive. You did a great job. Let I mean, me rephrase that. I hope to hell I get to do it again because of him. Now we're talking. <laughs> Hola. Hola. Felicidades por la película y me gustaría saber eh, cuál ha sido el momento más duro y el más divertido durante el rodaje. Gracias. Well, there were a lot of hard moments, so it's really hard to pick just one. Um, we spent a lot of weeks, mostly Natalia and myself, and I believe that in the film it's really just a short period of time, but you, you have to understand that you spend weeks and weeks and weeks doing something that might only be four minutes on film. So we were in the water. We had been given scuba lessons. You, you know, they would introduce us to scuba, and then two days later, we would go back and go deeper and farther. And then two days later, we'd have to go back and do it in the dark so that we became comfortable being in the dark water, um, doing near drowning scenes and action scenes and all kinds of things. So after several weeks in the water, we developed ear infections because that water is being shared by an entire crew of people. And so we would have ear, we got ear infections. And when we got out of the water, we went um, into the Humvee, and then they hung us upside down at 90 degrees. And the minute that I would reach 90 degrees hanging upside down, I would feel nauseated because my ears couldn't equilibrate. So nothing is more fun than acting with ear infections and nausea for another several weeks. Um, it was just a sort of a constant grind and there was no end in sight. So that was um, something that, you know, they don't teach you in acting school, how to, how to do all that and still do some great work. Um, as to the fun, uh, there were a lot of things that were fun, you know, really the weapons and certain things that we got to do. Um, Tim actually would have to say, Linda, stop smiling because the weapons and the um, moments that I had, they would put us on a harness or, you know, and pull us along down an incline, and I'd have to roll and pick up a weapon and come up shooting at this high speed. And it was just like being a child again. I was like, again, Daddy, let's do it again, because it was just so much fun to have to learn to use the body, to not turned so hard that the body, entire body would would flip and get out of um, focus. So just the command of the body and the speed was like the greatest ride on earth. So I wanted to do that all day. But Tim would have to say, Linda, stop smiling because it was just so much fun. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the most difficult moments were when we have this uh, plane crash when the plane crashes and comes down, this is free fall uh, with tremendous speed, and therefore there would be no gravity inside the plane because of this uh, fall, this drop. And so when we had this huge fight scene inside the plane while the plane is dropping around 160 miles an hour downward that's the ground, um, you know, it was very, very difficult to shoot those scenes because you had to be suspended on cables, and those fight scenes became kind of like really strenuous to do and very difficult to do. Uh, so I think those were the most difficult moments. And you're also acting to us something that doesn't exist a lot of times because there will be a green screens. So they will put the, the background and all this other stuff in there afterwards. So I think those scenes are very difficult. It's not going to be a acting scene that maybe is the most difficult, but it's an action scene that becomes then the most difficult. But the fun thing is, is like Linda says, the funny thing is you, 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 you rehearse so many times to go and to load the weapons and reload the weapons and all of this stuff. But as soon as the camera runs, something always screws up. And then you're trying to now 
act really cool and try to load the weapons with like a machine supposed to, and then all of a sudden it jams and it doesn't go quite work, and then we all start breaking out and laughing and having a great time with the whole thing because it happens to all of us. So there were funny moments like that also. Hola Arnold, Linda, buenos días, gracias por estar aquí. Eh, Terminator Dark Fate es una película que vuelve un poco a sus raíces y que toca mucho el tema de la redención. Me gustaría preguntaros eh, cómo ha sido el reencuentro entre el T-800 y Sarah Connor y si pensáis que el villano interpretado por Gabriel Luna es más letal que el del Robert Patrick. Gracias. Yes, I would say very much to answer the question of the Rev-9 and the T-1000 because with each incarnation of the killing machine, the skill set gets bigger and bolder and um, harder to exterminate. Um, so just by the nature of, you know, he's the 10th incarnation of, of a Terminator, now, now named Rev-9, um, just by definition, he's got to be better. Um, and in terms of getting back together with Arnold, there's nothing better than that. I just love working with him. Um, and we have forged a great friendship. We have 35 years of history together. And that is a wonderful thing to revisit whenever we can. I feel exactly the same way working with Linda. It has been a jewel working with her. One of the most dedicated uh, you know, people that I've ever met. Um, and, uh, you know, she really works her ass off to really to create a good performance on the screen. And she's really taking her craft seriously and all that stuff. I think this is, it's, it's really fantastic. One can see it on the screen. And as far as it, it goes with, uh, you know, the Rev-9, I think it is more dangerous. It's, it's clear because, I mean, he can adopt anyone's voice. He can adopt anyone's look. He can go and adopt anyone's clothing at any given time. And there you have then a two. You have the skeleton that can kind of separate from the, from the body. And so now you're fighting two, and that becomes very, very, it becomes very, very dangerous and almost impossible to do. And uh, so this is why you see him fighting this unbelievable amount of people in the detention center there, and uh, no one can keep this guy down. I mean, because he's a machine and he just has so many different abilities. And that's why we have such a tough time trying to get a hold of him and try to kill him and get rid of this uh, kind of unbelievable uh, that the, the coming again and coming again uh, kind of a Terminator-like character. Great. So we had time for one more uh, question. Muchas gracias por haberme lo hecho pasar tan bien con esta película, con toda la saga y a Linda por la serie Beauty and the Beast. Eh, en, una, en una escena se os ve jóvenes, rejuvenecidos por ordenador. ¿Cómo se hizo? ¿La grabasteis antes? Y eh, asusta verse en pantalla más joven. Gra gra muchas gracias. Um, yes, and I haven't seen it yet. I, I won't see it for another. 10 days because I like to I like to wait until the movie is complete. I don't want to see the process. Um, Tim kept trying to show me shots of the CGI of the younger Sarah Connor and I was like, no, no, I don't want to see it because it's really hard to give up even one minute of a performance when you care about a character so much. The way that that scene was shot was with a young woman who was the body double and an actress in her own right. So um, she was chosen mainly because her body resembled Sarah Connor 28 years ago. But, um, you know, I, I got to contribute very little to that scene. The stunts had been rehearsed. She did a very fine job, but it's painful to sit and watch somebody do you but it's not you. Um, then they added the CGI face onto her body later. And really I had to go and at the end duplicate 
vocally her performance um, because they CGI'd my young face onto her young body and then I had to go in and sort of tie it all together but just vocally and you know it's a whole new world out there it was it was hard to watch because it wasn't me <laughs> okay well that's all the time we had for today thank you so much for taking the time to speaking with us thank you thank, thank you, you everyone uh, y recuerden que Terminator Destino Fijo se estrena en España el 1 de noviembre no, 21 de octubre 21 de octubre.